Championship deadline day is almost upon us folks and in today's video we're going to be diving back into the rumour mill discussing some of the recently completed deals which have gone through in the championship over the past few days and jumping into all the rumours which I'm sure will be circling over these next few days heading into deadline day. As always do get your thoughts in the comments down below. What does your club still need to do in these final couple of days to go ahead and make sure you're going to have a good season this time around? Do you see your club being quite busy? on deadline day which I think it's going to be quite a quiet one. Before we jump into anything we have the managerial news with Tony Mowbray off to Sunderland as Alex Neal's replacement. Sunderland fans would be particularly interested to get your thoughts on this one in the comments down below. Obviously if you saw my Alex Neal reaction video I get I shared my thoughts on that one with him jumping over to Stoke City and with Mowbray coming in as his replacement I am a little bit mixed on this one to be completely honest. I think it's a safe pick but dare I say it maybe not the massively ambitious choice which would have seen Sunderland continuing on their current trajectory um, and going from strength to strength but Mowbray is a safe pair of hands obviously we saw throughout his time at Blackburn you know re-establishing them as a championship club and slowly but surely getting them in contention for the top six as well. In terms of comparing Mowbray and Neil I personally would have Neil um, a tier or two above Tony Mowbray. Um, if we take their times at their you know most recent clubs, if we take Neil at Preston compared to Mowbray at Blackburn, in each of the three seasons that those two were in the championship up against each other head-to-head, -head, Neil finished above Mowbray um, in every single season and had considerably less in terms of the resources to go ahead and work with at Preston as well. So I could be a little bit wrong with this, but towards the end at Blackburn, Tony Mowbray just seemed a little bit beaten down and I thought that he'd have a little bit more time out of football but perhaps this Sunderland opportunity has come up and it's you know one that's too good for him to go ahead and turn down so uh, yeah I sort of back up the fact that I think this one is a safe pick he's a safe pair of hands and maybe that's what Sunderland are after to properly re-establish themselves in the championship but maybe not the ambitious move that you know a lot of Sunderland fans will be getting carried away with um, that we thought maybe they might have gone ahead and approached after how well Neil had done there. Hopping over to some completed deals, we saw Hull get a deal over the line for Salah Adin. He's coming over from Arsenal on a season-long loan. Gives them a few more reinforcements in that uh, attacking midfielder role um, for Arsenal's under-23s last season. Had quite a promising season. Looking forward to see what he can do over the course of this year for Hull. And Hull also got a deal over the line for Cyrus Christie. He was available on a free transfer upon his contract expiring. Plenty of championship clubs had been linked with the move for the right back my club Preston being one of those he'd been training at Birmingham and a few others throwing their hat in the ring I think this is a really underrated bit of business here from Hull if I'm being honest really like the look of him at uh, Swansea last season I think they got a great deal here on a free transfer we saw Middlesbrough getting the deal over the line for Matt Clark this one we spoke about the rumour in the last transfer rumour roundup video but it has since been confirmed excellent bit of business thought he did really well on his debut and will be that natural fit as that left-sided centre-half. Sunderland completed the deal for Costa Rican winger Jewison Burnett, uh, very much an unknown quantity in the championship. He signed a four-year deal with Sunderland, only 18 years old. We saw Reading get a deal over the line for Nabi Sar. He's joined as a free agent and actually scored on his debut, so already a popular one amongst the Reading fans. This one had been long rumoured. We had spoken about this one a few videos ago in the transfer rumour roundup. Nabi Sar, a player who you never quite know what you're going to get from. Uh, go from 0 to 100 real quick but in Reading circumstances um, I think this is a solid pick up. Burnley completed the deal for Dennis Franchi. The goalkeeper comes over from PSG on a 3 year deal. Uh, he'll come in as an understudy to the options that are already at the club 19 years old but one that Vincent Company um, and the rest of the staff there will look to develop. QBR completed the deal for Leon Balligan on a free transfer. Had a couple of really good years at range and brings a wealth of experience into that back line for the season at QPR. We saw Blackpool complete a deal for Leeds United winger Ian Perveda on a season-long loan deal. Black 
Paul done some decent business in the loan market so far as we sort of expected they would when they went ahead and hired Michael Appleton obviously he's got quite the track record with uh, bringing on and developing youngsters from the Premier League but they will look to be the next player off that conveyor belt obviously we saw um, a few flashes of him during uh, last season in the championship with Blackburn I, I do think there's a player there albeit maybe he needs to go ahead and find that consistency but with the template that Appleton's brought into Blackburn so far this season, I think he'll be a decent fit into that side. But will also complete the deal for Shamrock Rovers fullback Andy Lyons. They were in need of bolstering up this position, and the fullback will join the Blackpool squad in January. Um, interesting transfer, certainly has quite a bit of pedigree about him, albeit I'm always a little bit speculative um, in buying from the Irish League because you never can quite gauge the level there. Um, obviously, pressure have been burned quite a few times um, in years gone by from buying over the, in the Irish League, but as the Things stand right now um, looks to be a player um, with quite some promise. Cardiff completed the loan signing of Niels and Kunku coming over on a season long loan deal from Everton. He adds another option into that left hand side department at the back. He got 45 minutes against Preston at the weekend. And we saw Blackburn completely a good deal for Coventry defender Dominic Hine. This one almost coming out of nowhere, but a really solid addition for Blackburn. Um, Blackburn were desperately in need of some more cover into that defensive area. There have been a hell of a lot of links to Blackburn over the course of this window, but finally going ahead and getting a deal over the line. Cov fans, I'd be interested to get your reaction to this one down below. We did speak, and there has been quite a bit of discourse about Coventry's saleable assets throughout this window. Ohio, we didn't really um, put into that bracket. You know, it's mostly the likes of the Callum O'Hares, the Gurkarezes, and the Gustavo Hamers that we thought Coventry might have been losing in this window. But instead, they've lost a real dependable member of that back line who I think will go quite a way um, in strengthening Rovers. Hannibal Medjbury has completed his move over to Birmingham for the season, coming in from Manchester United on a season long loan. This being the next stage in his development for the 19 year old midfielder. He did get a couple of cameos at Old Trafford last season and um, obviously that one against Liverpool coming on um, from the bench and bumping into absolutely everyone. So will be a bundle of energy and Manchester United have quite the number of youngsters who are out on loan in the championship this season. So it'll be interesting to see and to gauge where each of them are all at in their development. But there we have it guys. Those are some of the recently completed deals we've seen go through in the championship over the past few days. Now without any further ado, let's jump into the rumours. So Birmingham are currently in advanced negotiations for a deal for Tahith Chong potentially on a permanent basis. I think this one would be some really quite good business from Birmingham actually. Obviously we saw him out on loan there last season, 18 starts in the championship. Started out life at St Andrews absolutely fantastically. Um, just the one goal and two assists in the end for him that season. But his all round play when he was fully fit and firing, um, you know, he's more than good enough to cut it at this level. Um, one of Birmingham's most technical players from last season as well it was just a case of them getting him fit and on the pitch so yeah only 22 years old if this one is on a permanent basis I really quite like this one there have been plenty of speculation about Liverpool centre half Seth Vandenberg and what his next stage of his development was going to be both Blackburn and Burnley had been heavily linked with the move for the Liverpool defender but it now appears as if Schalke will be his destination for this season and a low move out to the Bundesliga it was something that I have previously mentioned I thought you know from a you know a neutral's perspective outside looking in after he's done that season and a half at Preston it would probably make more sense for him to get a loan spell out to a different league he's going to get that now in the Bundesliga but no doubt a loss uh, for Blackburn who obviously pursued him for quite a while and it's looking like Emil Reese could be staying at Preston North End. We did have reports coming out about a potential seven and a half million bid uh, being made, but Ryan Lowe came out in his press conference and said that no acceptable bids have come in for Emil Reese. And as things stand right now, he will be a Preston North End player going forward and for the foreseeable future. I like this. Uh, Preston have held their guns here. You know, we've said that we wanted um, you know anything around that sort of ten million mark and. We weren't going to go ahead and budge on that. I like that we've been strong with that so far and selling Emil Reese this late into this transfer window 
could be a potential recipe for disaster given our lack of goals already in this squad at the moment you know I think we need to add another striker already into the team as it is never mind losing our best one so yeah Emil Reis looks as if he is staying at Preston and that Middlesbrough may move on to other targets now and there could be quite a lot of movement in the Ben Brereton Diaz camp towards the end of this transfer window there are several Premier League clubs who are currently circling the Blackburn forward of things that we're hearing right now it does seem as if Everton are the most interested to go in with a serious bid we've already seen Blackburn knock back some attempts for Brereton Diaz in both this transfer window and stretching back to January as well we've covered this one loads on the channel but Blackburn are in a quite tricky situation as his contract is expiring at the end of the season in January he can talk to clubs abroad and um, you know and could leave on a free transfer so they are in a little bit of a perilous position there but they are sticking to their guns you know they'll be wanting I'd imagine at least 10 million plus for him um, if they were to sell him this summer because of how important he is and the goals he'll no doubt bring to that side and Blackpool also find themselves in a very similar position with Josh Bowler at this point in time seems as if the club that are most likely to go ahead and land a deal for him would be Nottingham Forest although Watford have also thrown their hat in the ring as interested in the Blackpool winger listen he's had a terrific start to this season already tops the championship list in terms of completing dribbles as he sat on top of that list throughout the vast majority of last season as well. From Blackpool's perspective, it is a tricky one. They have brought in Ian Perveda, who we spoke about previously, someone who can occupy one of those wide roles should Josh Bowler go ahead and leave. But it would leave them in a tricky situation. They'd have an influx of cash coming in towards the end of that window, but to go ahead and spend that, um, you know, in the matter of hours that they may have if this one goes through on deadline day, would be particularly tricky for Blackpool. This one all comes down to whether Nottingham Forest will go ahead and submit that suitable bid. But as things stand right now Blackpool haven't had that big come in this one will be a massive loss for Burnley but there has been some late interest in midfielder Josh Brownhill from a few Premier League clubs both Southampton and Leicester said to be sniffing around the Burnley midfielder so far this season we've seen just how vital of a component he'll actually be in this Vincent company system and um, I go as far to say he's probably been their best player so far this season certainly in their top three performers this far into the year at the start of the season I had a feeling that he'd be um, uh, pretty important and that Vincent Company um, would get out his best traits and we've seen so far in the championship that that has been the case with Premier League clubs coming circling though and the finances that they'll have available to them to spend on deadline day we'll see um, if a sizable offer does come in but yeah Burnley would be really quite hard pressed to go ahead and replace a player as good as Brownhill late this late on into the window. We've also had Blackburn Rovers being linked with the move for QPR forward Lyndon Dykes. Be interested to get some QPR fans' perspectives on this one. Lyndon Dykes tends to get quite mixed reviews from QPR fans. Not a natural out and out goal scorer. Uh, eight goals for him last season, but I can see what other attributes he brings to the side. Quite a physical presence in the final third last season. Uh, four aerial duels, one per 90. QPR, as things stand, are already a little bit light up front they'll be going into deadline day looking to add another forward I'm sure and should they lose London Dykes that's now two forwards potentially and um, that they'd be after this late on and into the window if a sizable bid was to come in from Rovers and um, I'm sure that that would get QPR tempted but this late in the window we'll see but guys there we have it that will wrap it up for today's video thank you very much for tuning in as always any other rumors that are going around in the championship at the moment make sure to get them in the comments down below as always if you did go to enjoy make sure to leave a like and do stick around and subscribe for some regular championship content thanks for tuning in guys and i'll see you all in the next one